हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द अनदर सेशन ऑफ ई पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मोनिका सोनी आई एम फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पॉलिटिकल साइंस जी जी डी एस टी कॉलेज सेक्टर थर्टी टू चंडीगढ़ आई एम हियर टू प्रजेंट द मॉड्यूल एंड द नेम ऑफ द मॉड्यूल इज स्वामी दयानंद सरस्वती द रिफॉर्मिस्ट स्वामी दयानंद सरस्वती वॉज अ ग्रेट एजुकेशनिस्ट सोशल रिफॉर्मर एंड अ कल्चरल नेशनलिस्ट ही वॉज द फाउंडर ऑफ आर्या समाज एज बींग द सोशल रिफॉर्मर ही प्रजेंटेड हिज स्कीम ऑफ सोशल रिफॉर्म्स इन अ वेरी डिटेल्ड एंड कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव वे एंड ही हैज इंक्लूडेड वेरियस सेक्शन ऑफ द सोसाइटी इन हिज स्कीम ऑफ सोशल रिफॉर्म्स लाइक इन केस ऑफ वीमेन वी सी दैट ही वॉज टोटली अगेंस्ट द ईवल प्रैक्टिस ऑफ चाइल्ड मैरिज एंड एनफोर्स्ड विडोहुड द पिटिएबल कंडीशन ऑफ चाइल्ड विडोज पेंड हिम द मोस्ट एंड ही वॉज ऑल्सो अगेंस्ट द परदा सिस्टम ही सजेस्टेड द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ निगोपा फॉर दीज यू नो चाइल्ड विडोज एंड ही बिलीव्ड दैट एन एजुकेटेड मैन नीड्स एन एजुकेटेड वाइफ to bring greater social reforms in the society in his you know efforts uh, to do work for the education of the women he provided them opportunity to get education in dav schools and colleges in the field of education system we see that he believed that the lack of knowledge was the only reason of the adulteration of hinduism so he opened gurukuls and he where he taught uh, the youth uh, the teachings of vedas and he also you know inspired them to spread these uh, teachings of vedas back to the society in the case of uh, religious reforms we find uh, that uh, he was uh, totally against the system of uh, idol worship and uh, the evil ritualistic religious practices you know he was a firm believer of uh, the the worship of uh, one god god only and uh, he regarded religion as a source to regulate our mind body and soul and with regard to the caste system dear friends we find the, that he was also uh, totally against the caste system untouchability and social inequality that was prevalent in that kind of uh, that time of uh, social system of india he informed people he guided people about those uh, texts of vedas where there was a no mention of uh, these kind of practices at all and in the field of uh, you know state uh, we find that uh, he was not at all concerned about the existence of the state all he uh, uh, all he was worried about uh, Uh, that uh, state should focus on the betterment of the people he emphasized that state should focus on the fourfold objects of individual life that is uh, material prosperity religion enjoyment and salvation he also stressed on the individual freedom of uh, a man the objectives of this module is to map the basic contour of the early nationalist response and to analyze the socio political thought of dayanand saraswati swami dayanand was a great educationist social reformer and also a cultural nationalist he was a great soldier of light a warrior in god's word a sculptor of men and institution dayanand saraswati's great contribution was the foundation of arya samaj which brought a revolution in the field of education and religion Swami Dayanand Saraswati is one of the most important reformers and spiritual forces India has known in recent times. The philosophy of Dayanand Saraswati can be known from his three famous contributions namely Satyarth Prakash, Ved Bhashya Bhumika and Ved Bhashya. Further the journal Arya Patrika edited by him also reflects his thoughts. Swami Dayanand The great founder of Arya Samaj occupies a unique position in the history of political ideas of modern India. When the educated young men of India were slavishly copying 
the superficial aspects of European civilization and were making agitation for transplanting the political institutions of England and India, Indian soil without paying any heed to the genius and culture of the Indian people. Swami Dayanand boldly hurled India's defiance against the social, cultural and political domination of the West. Swami Dayanand, the greatest apostle of the Indo-Aryan culture and civilization, also proved to be greatest exponent of the most advanced ideas in politics in India. He was against idol worship, caste system, ritualism, fatalism, infanticide, sale of grooms, etc. He also stood for the liberation of women and upliftment of depressed classes. Keeping in mind the supremacy of Vedas and Hindus, he opposed Islam and Christianity and advocated for Shuddhi movement to reconvert the other sects to Hindu order. Dayanand expressed political ideas too when he described theory of state, forms of governments, three cameral legislation, functions of government, rule of law, etc. Swami Dayanand was a great educationist, social reformer and also a cultural nationalist. The dominant personality of Dayanand Saraswati has found extraordinary reflection in the virility of the Arya Samaj movement and in almost every one of its adherents. The contribution of Arya Samaj in the field of education is commendable. According to Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, quote, among the markers of modern India who had played an important role in the spiritual uplift of people and kindled the fire of patriotism in me, among them Swami Dayanand has occupied the chief place, unquote. Life sketch. Dayanand was born in an orthodox Brahman family at Tankara in the Morvi state in Kathiawar in 1824 to Karsamji Tiwari who served as a priest in a Shiva temple. The childhood name of Dayanand was Mulasankar. Under the loving care of his father Dayanand had acquired proficiency in Veda, Sanskrit grammar and Sanskrit language from childhood. Like Gautam became Buddha after witnessing four ordinary scenes of life, Dayanand's lifestyle changed after a single incident. When he was 14 years of age, he kept fast on the Shivratri day with the other members of the family. At night, other members of the family were worshipping Shiva, began to sleep, but Mulaji remained vigilant. He saw a rat eating the offering made to Shiva by the devotees. This incident led him to think that the idol of Shiva could not be real God. When the idol could not protect the offering made to it, it could never protect the whole world. He became convinced about the futility of idol worship. This experience aroused his conscience and Dayananda became a staunch crusader against the vices of Hinduism. His father tried to involve him in family life through marriage with a view to put restriction on his independent mind. Dayananda was not willing to enter into the bondage of family life. Therefore, he fled from his home and reached Mathura. In 1861, at Mathura, Dayanand came in contact with Swami Brijananda. This contact is decisive point in his career. He became his disciple and studied the ancient religious literature, various mythological books and Sanskrit grammar text. The philosophical foundation of Dayanand took a concrete shape at Mathura. He got knowledge and realization. Mulasankar became a Dayanand Saraswati and by the instruction of his guru, Vrijanand dedicated himself to spread the message of Veda and to fight against the conservative Hindu religion and wrong traditions. Dayanand though had contact with Brahmu Samaj, they were not prepared to accept the supremacy of the Vedas and transmigration of soul. To fulfill the mission of his life, he founded Arya Samaj at Bombay on 10th April 1875 and passed the rest of his life in establishing Arya Samaj branches at different places. 
the reformative zeal of Dayanand irritated the orthodox Hindus. Dayanand stood firm and resolute in the face of criticisms. He died of food poisoning on 30th October 1883. On Women, Education, Religion and Democracy On the question of reforms in the women, Dayanand was opposed to the evil practices of child marriage and enforced widowhood, which according to him did not have the sanction of Vedas. The pitiable condition of child widow in the society which prohibited a remarriage evoked his deepest concern. He therefore suggested Nigopa, a non-permanent cohabitation of widow and widowers and later even widow remarriage. For the prosperity of Aryavarth, that is India, Dayanand's worldview had a crucial place for education. An education based on moral and religious foundations and meant for all the four classes of men and women was what Dayanand wanted. The burden of this education was, according to him, to be shouldered by the king or state. He stood for compulsory education. India's awakening, he thought, hinged on this factor. He was in favor of an educational system which would emphasize on grammar, philosophy, Vedas, sciences, medicine, music and art. The political philosophy of Dayanand Saraswati has two central ideas, somewhat contradictory to each other. The first is the idea of an enlightened monarchy, a concept that he borrowed from Manu Samriti, that is, a monarchy thoroughly rooted in obedience to dharma. The second somewhat contradictory notion is that of elective representation, that is, democracy. Though there really is no contradiction since, in the Vedas, there are references to assembly and the election of the king. Stressing the principle of election, he interprets the king as a president of the assembly. Moreover, politics for him was inseparable from morality and he therefore argued strongly for the guidance of political leaders by spiritual leaders. Dayanand extended his democratic elective principle into the functioning and organizational structure of the Arya Samaj. He further visualized a polity which would be the embodiment of decentralization, a vast commonwealth with the village as the unit. The following are some of the principles out of the 10 important principles of the modern India. Number 1. The source of pure knowledge is God. The link between Vedas as guardians of true knowledge and an Arya Samajist is indispensable. He must assimilate its contents and make it popular among the people. Ethical justifications of actions are a must. The Arya Samaj is devoted to the idea of emancipation of the world in all aspects. Number 5. Rays of knowledge must dispel the darkness of ignorance. Number 6. One must leave enough for others. Man's well-being can only be identified with the collective development of his fellow men. Political ideas. The political ideas of Dayanand are as under. Swami Dayanand was an idealist in politics and he found his inspiration from the study of Vedas. His method of interpreting the Vedas was quite different from the traditional method. He started with the age-long tradition that the Vedas contain truths which are universal in their application and which can stand the test of acute reason in searching science. The Indian tradition is that even sciences like medicine, mathematics, music, astronomy, politics and economics are based on Vedas. Theory of State Swami Dayanand doesn't make any inquiry about the origin of the state. He concentrates his attention on the discussion of the character of a fully organized state with all its organs of administration. According to him, the state stands for the realization of the highest objects of life. The objective of state is not just to look to the secular and material welfare of the citizens, but to promise the fourfold objects of human life, namely religion, material prosperity, enjoyment and salvation. He wanted the state to direct its activities in such a way 
that these may be conducive to the securing of freedom from the bondage of the world the form of government swami dayanand is dead against the rule by one man in his satyarth prakash he says that absolute power should not be entrusted to one man an autocratic king never allows others to be equal to him his own personality may overshadow that of others he declares that an autocrat is sure to be partial in order to fulfill his own selfish ends swami dayanand admitted the necessity of having a president for representing the unity of the state the right of ruling the people is to be conferred by the people themselves dayanand fit in his theory of republicanism with the divine right of kingship theory which he propounded by the dharm shastras he observes that if the persons entrusted with the state affairs are men of learning they would be able to secure great power for the state the three assemblies swami dayanand states quote let the three assemblies harmoniously work together and make good laws and let all abide by those laws let them all be of one mind in affairs that promote the happiness of all unquote swami dayanand allows autonomy to educational and religious bodies normally the political or legislative assembly should not interfere with the decision arrive at the education and religious assemblies but the legislative assembly cannot hold itself totally aloof in educational and religious matters swami dayanand held the law alone as the real king he exhorts all to remember the teachings of the vedic text which he says quote verily the just law alone is the true king yes the just law is the true religion he writes quote the law alone is the true governor that maintains order among the people the law alone is their protector the law keeps awake whilst all the people are fast asleep the wise therefore look upon the law alone as dharm or right when rightly administered the law makes all men happy but when administered wrongly without due consideration as to the requirements of justice it ruins the king rightly administered law promotes the practice of virtue acquisition of wealth and secures the attainment of heartfelt desires of his people unquote swami dayanand doesn't like to provide even a separate set of judicial courts for the trials of king and other high officers he upholds this dictum and elaborates it by stating that while the punishment inflicted on the king should be 1000 times heavier than on an ordinary person functions of government to swami dayanand government is the agent of the community it has not only to provide security against internal and external dangers but also to promote the highest aims of human life he admits the need of allowing the citizens to hold private property he believes in the inequality of division of wealth but at the same time apprehends that the rich might give trouble to the government he also laid great emphasis on the maintenance of strong army he describes that there is no other way of maintaining independence of the state than the raising up of a strong defensive force within the government dayanand saraswati and arya samaj on 7th april 1875 Dayanand Saraswati formed the Arya Samaj at Bombay. It was a Hindu reforms movement meaning society of the nobles. The purpose of the samaj was to move the Hindu religion away from the fictitious beliefs. The motto of the samaj was to make the world noble. The 10 tenets of the Arya Samaj are as follows. God is the source of all true knowledge and all that is known through knowledge. God is existent intelligent and blissful he is formless just merciful unborn endless unchangeable beginningless unequaled the support of all the master of all omnipresent imminent unaging immortal fearless eternal and holy and the maker of all he alone is worthy of being worshiped The Vedas are the scriptures of all true knowledge it is the paramount duty of all aryas to read teach and recite them and to hear them being read 
one should always be ready to accept truth and to renounce untruth all acts should be performed in accordance with dharma that is after deliberating what is right and wrong the prime object of the arya samaj is to do good to the world that is to promote physical spiritual and social good of everyone our conduct towards all should be guided by love righteousness and justice we should dispel avidya and promote vidya no one should be content with promoting his or her good only on the contrary one should look for his or her good in promoting the good of all and the last point related to is that one should regard oneself under restriction to follow the rules of society calculated to promote the well being of all while in following the rules of individual welfare all should be free upliftment of women the arya samaj not only sought spiritual reorganization of the indian psyche it also worked towards abolishing various evil social practices primarily among these were widow remarriage and women education the samaj launched programs to support widow remarriage in the 1880s shuddhi movement the shuddhi movement was introduced by maharishi dayanand to bring back the individuals to hinduism who were either voluntarily or involuntarily converted to other religions like islam or christianity shuddhi or purification was imparted to those who sought their way back to hinduism and the samaj did an excellent work in penetrating the various strata of society taking back the depressed classes into the folds of hinduism educational reforms maharishi dayanand was fully convinced that the lack of knowledge was the main culprit behind the adulteration of hinduism he set up a number of gurukuls to teach his followers the knowledge of the vedas and for them to spread the knowledge further and inspired them to spread the knowledge further inspired by his beliefs teachings and ideas his disciples it established the dayanand anglo vedic college trust and management society religious reforms although dayanand immortalized the vedas however he opposed idol worship he raised a voice against ritualistic religious practices those religious performances would lead to social economic political and religious degeneration of india he denounced polytheism a worship of god in different forms he emphasized that this polytheism has brought the division in hindu society opposition to caste system and untouchability dayanand launched his crusade against caste system and untouchability he reinterpreted the system of varna mentioned in the veda it was meant for occupational purpose in the society as per the doctrines of guna karma and swabhav the society was divided into different varnas like brahmins kshatriya vaishyas and shudras with their respective occupation like worship protecting the country carrying on trade and commerce and to serve the other three castes this occupation were interchangeable he emphasized the political need of this division of the society in a similar way dayanand denounced untouchability and labeled it as inhuman and unsocial status of women upliftment of women the arya samaj not only sought spiritual reorganization of the indian psyche it also worked towards abolishing various social evil practices primarily among these were widow remarriage and women education the samaj launched programs to support widow remarriage in 1880s maharishi dayanand also underlined the importance of educating the girl child and opposed child marriage dayanand championed the cause of women child marriage and purda system were the orders of the hindu society women education was restricted and widow remarriage was not allowed dayanand protested against all these evils he cited the high position of women during vedic period so he argued in favor of the equal rights of women with men he emphasized on women education and created provisions for them to read in dae schools and colleges he also asserted the right of women over property he opposed child marriage and argued in favor of legislation to stop this evil practice he also condemned polygamy and polyandry his reforms gave a moral boost to the women and helped in their upliftment to summarize we can say though that though some of the critics uh, criticize swami dayanand saraswati because of his inclination towards the hinduism but we can say that he was a thorough social reformer who gave a very detailed and comprehensive scheme of social reforms and he included the various sections of the society under his scheme 
like religion, women, education, caste system, etc. He was also interested in bringing the decentralization of powers and rule of law. He tried to, you know, the, his, his one another significant contribution can be seen in the field of his Shuddhi movement, under which he tried to bring back the depressed classes of the society into the fold of Hinduism. Thank you.